Welcome to another episode of Power Move Makers. This series was created with a simple goal in mind, to bring to the table high-level executives, successful entrepreneurs, and just all-around inspiring human beings, not just focusing on their success, but more important, shining a spotlight on the road they traveled to get there. Now, this week's guest, <clears throat> I really needed, not want, but needed to get him on the program because I know him as this A-list actor on a number one TV show, but I had no idea of his backstory. And the more I got to learn about who he is as a human being, the obstacles, the adversities, the challenges that he came through as a kid and all of the service he's given to the country, to his people, I was fascinated and intrigued. I'm excited to have this conversation, but it's just one of those conversations that I'm looking forward to because it makes me feel good as a human being. Please welcome to this week's Power Move Makers, Mr. Hisham Tafik. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Nobody don't just have the name Hisham from nowhere. This name got to mean something. So let's start off right there. And is, is it a shortened version of it? Do you got a nickname? Like, tell me where this comes from. Uh, the, the short story is my father was a student of Malcolm X. Um, my father then was inspired by Malcolm, received a scholarship from Malcolm and went to Egypt where he studied at Al-Azhar University, converted to Islam, um, came back to Harlem, founded a mosque, had five boys. I'm the oldest and my name is Hisham Taufik. Hisham means one who breaks bread and Taufik uh, in Arabic means lucky or blessed. Hisham, one who breaks, one who breaks one bread? Who, one who breaks bread, meaning one who shares. One who shares and Taufik, Meaning one who is blessed or lucky or... Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, is there a shortened version of that or is everybody just call you Hisham? Uh, for the most part, everybody called me Taufik. Um, I, I would say just because high school, I was an athlete, played football, everybody calls you by your last name. So a lot of pe people just call me Taufik or Fik or, you know, that type. Most people call me Taufik. Okay, dope. You know, before I get into your story, you just said something that was crazy. Your father, did he study under Malcolm X? Like, did, did he actually know the man? Did he learn from him? Or did he just study his teachings? No, no, no. He, he, knew, he knew Malcolm. He knew Betty. He, actually, I know all of Malcolm's daughters. I know Camilla. I, you know, he, he um, after Malcolm was assassinated, he kind of took over with teaching the daughters Arabic, I think, in 1964 in Ebony Magazine, if you look it up. There's a picture of my father, Betty Shabazz, and the three girls sitting down while he's giving them an Arabic lesson. So he was good friends and a student of Malcolm. And when Malcolm came back from his studies in Egypt and really learning about um, Sunni Islam and Muslims, um, he had impressed the people in Egypt. So the um, dignitaries in Egypt said, hey, here's, here's four scholarships to give to your students. And my father was one of the students that got a scholarship who then followed in Malcolm steps and went to Mecca and did the same studies. Oh, that's amazing. That is amazing. Um, coming up, did you, did you understand the significance of this? Did you understand like? No, my father unfortunately um, passed away when I was a senior in high school. So I didn't really learn about the history of his connection to Malcolm and Betty um, until later, later in my life. Got you. Did you ever have an uh, opportunity to meet Betty? No, I've, 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 I know the daughters. I've met the daughters. I speak to the daughters, but I, I never met Betty or, or um, no. Okay. A lot of people are going to know you watching this off the bat, Blacklist, Dembe. On the show, your character is African, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. You have straight up African features, you are a, a handsome black man. In real life, are you African or are you just African-American? 
Um, um, you know, I'm, I'm African American. My mother's from Savannah, Georgia, from the Geechee lands. And we, if you do your history, we know that a lot of um, enslaved uh, Africans came in through uh, uh, South Carolina and the ports in, in the Geechee, Geechee Islands. Uh, my mother is my complexion, same features. Um, so of course, my father did research and I've done research. So we've tied my my ancestors back to Kush and Ghana and, and places like that. Um, but I, I, I guess I attribute my strong features to, to my mother and my father, but specifically on my mother's side, um, down there in Savannah, Georgia, where you know a lot of our people came through. Wow, how about that? Uh, you have, you have, you have, I know you mentioned that your dad passed. Your mom, she passed early in your life as well, correct? Yeah, my, mo my mother was a victim of uh, uh, gun violence when I was four years old. Okay, it, 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 was her, I guess, killer ever brought to justice? Did you ever get any of the backstory? No, I, I honestly was told that she died in a car crash all my life. And it wasn't until I needed her death certificate to fill out my application for college that I saw in the death certificate that she died from multiple gunshots. Um, and then that's when I started digging and, and found out that she had some sisters in Savannah, Georgia, and I connected with that family and found out that she was, uh, well, I knew, yeah, that's when I found out that, you know, she was, was murdered and it was never solved. Oh, sorry to hear that, brother. My condolences. Thank you. How does, you've achieved a high level of success in your life. Uh, and when I say success, I don't just mean it monetarily. Uh, I think that success comes <clears throat> in all different ways, just in terms of happiness, uh, in terms of service. You seem to be a very well-rounded and successful gentleman. And you're doing your thing career-wise, but... So many people that I know, especially when they lose mama early, they're never the same. It, it's something about losing their mother early that just changes them. But you lost both of your parents relatively early in your life. How, you know, what is that like, number one? How did you go from, I guess, for lack of a better way to put it, being an orphaned child, oldest of five brothers, to stay insane, to doing the right thing, yeah, well, not I'm, hitting the streets. Well, I think you're. I think you're my age, so um, you know, yeah. I'm I'm 51. So I was growing up in the 70s in Harlem, where everybody was addicted to heroin. This was before crack, so it was, really it was heroin. It was dust. Um, seeing people nod out on the corner. Um, I saw a lot of that, you know, the vacant buildings, the, you know, people getting shot. But um, what I realized later in my years, what, which, which helped me kind of avoid a lot of those pitfalls was um, my father was a very, um, he was a special man. He was a man ahead of his times. Um, and I think he understood and knew that in raising a family that it even takes more than two parents. Um, so what my father did uh, in, in the 70s, he, uh, there was three vacant buildings in Harlem, drug infested buildings. And I think he went to the city and the city was like, if you could clean them out, you get the dope dealers out, the drug, you can have them. Um, and he got some other Muslim brothers from Cleveland, Ohio and Atlanta, and they all teamed up and they cleaned out three vacant buildings in Harlem. In these three vacant buildings, then were all Muslim families. They had, a, we had a school, we had a mosque, we had a restaurant, we had everything in these three buildings. So even though I was surrounded by all of this havoc and drugs and crime and poverty, um, I kind of grew up in this little safe haven village. Um, and it was a village that was respected by the outsiders where they knew, hey, that's a Muslim community over there all the businesses we doing. Um, my father and brothers, they painted the sidewalk green that covered all three buildings. And everybody knew that you couldn't sell dope on the green, you couldn't hang on the green, you couldn't even step on the green if you was doing something illegal. And of course, that came out of a lot of um, 
physical interaction sometimes, but um, it, it, it was respected. Um, so I say that to, to give you the backdrop that when my mother and father died, I was still living in a community with all of these Muslim brothers and sisters who um, in some aspect um, looked out for me um, and made sure, even though when my father died, he was the leader of the community, a lot of people um, were traumatized, a lot of people were hurt. Um, but in some way, the spirit of what he created kind of guided me and protected me. Now I got in trouble, I got arrested, I got in trouble, I, I did stuff. Um, and I was just blessed not to end up in a coffin or behind bars. And um, I didn't do anything crazy, crazy, but um, I, I, you know, a favor was shown upon me. Um, mm -hmm. and, and based on who my father was and me being the oldest, um, I just knew I was anointed to do some special stuff. So I've always um, gone out. And, and you got to also remember, in creating this village, I knew way back about my ancestors. I knew about the importance of Africa. My father took my whole family to live in Saudi Arabia for a year. So I lived in Mecca for when I was 12 years old for about a year. So I got to travel, I got to see the world. Um, I understood that there was more than just the block. Um, and I understood that he, I, anything that I wanted to do, I could achieve. Um, he put me in the, bout, in the Boy Scouts early. He taught me how to swim. I was a lifeguard for, for three years at a camp. So I was filled up with to the brim of this world is yours. You can go out and get it. But at the same time, understanding um, that I'm a black man, what the pitfalls are, what the hurdles are, but also that I'm, empo I'm empowered to almost do anything I, I believe in and can do anything I want. So all of that was, was buried in me. And as I grew older, it just started to grow. And um, that's a huge reason why I do have some type of level of success. Now I will say in that community, there are tons of people who um, fell victim to drugs, fell victim to crime, um, are locked up, um, don't have the, the, the type of success I am may not still be connected to their Islam or their deem or their religious way of life that they were raised with. But um, I'm one of the person who, who, who came out of that, 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 that fire and you know I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to make the best out of it. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.